Oh, I want to do, and I don't know if I can do this. is very ambitious. But I want to come out with a double swinging in October, rate my cult Trump and rate my cult wokeism. Mm -hmm. Because I think wokeism is cult adjacent. Yes. You can make a stronger argument for the Trump. Yeah, MAGA is definitely a cult. Mm -hmm. It's well, absolutely it meets all cult. the criteria. It meets all the criteria, and it's a fantastic cult. Yeah. It might be a five-goat head cult, because they took over the whole of the government. They yeah. were in power in the largest, most impressive military that there ever was. Right, and I think th they, if you... If you added a metric, like how successful were they at meeting their own goals? Oh, my God. Exceeded they, like, goals. I think they were they were so successful, they would... Because I don't... I subscribe to the idea that he never meant to become president. No, he just wanted to get uh, more street cred for his cable network whatever or whatever. Whatever that was going to be. Whatever he was... Yeah, that, that idea is long in the past. Yeah. Now, I mean, he's still trying to... Uh, push truth social and whatever where right. he puts his tweets but nevertheless he was selling merch oh my god he, he sells the best merch and he'll sell all the merch for mm -hmm. like his nfts oh amazing but the woke thing you say is is at least called to jason the woke thing is a continuation on the aquarian conspiracy which has been going on for like 40 years now right with the hippies and so forth yeah. Um, so you so got to figure really out how to make that approachable to the <laughs> to the average person. Well, yeah, because that that is when you go deep. You go deep deep into it and they totally co-opted uh the black right struggle of the early 2010s mm -hmm. with woke. Stay is that woke. a pattern? Oh yeah. They co-opt everything. Of course they do. They have to. They have to. They have to co-opt the black struggle or the Indian Native American struggle mm -hmm. because the black struggle is undeniable. Yeah. Morally undeniable. Yeah. And so if you want to have some sort of credibility, you compare yourself to it. Yeah. And it's fair. I think you, you say you want to drop both at the same time, which is fair because one is the right losing its mind and the other is the left losing its mind. Yeah. And I don't think either of them have what it takes to actually lead the country into this next century. Right. Neither it, of them do. And we talk about it all the time that like there is eventually we hope there will be a movement somewhere in the middle that that is just a rational movement. And it has to be pragmatic. 110 percent right. pragmatic. But it just has to be what works. Unfortunately, it seems like that movement has become the Internet culture red pill movement. And that's the red pill is nothing. The red pill has become nothing. It is it is neutered itself. Well, they're under attack. Because they got Russell Brand. How Russell Brand has managed to attach himself to the red <laughs> pill after all he's done in his life the is Matrix really impressive. The Matrix got another one. Yeah, I suppose you could look at it like that. Or you could look at it as the red pill is very tempting to people who finally read the People's History of the United States yeah. at 30. And they should have read it at 14 years old. Mm -hmm. So they read it at 30. And then they get really mad because the country isn't what they thought it was, never was what they thought it was. This has always been a hustle. Yeah. Well, let's talk about it because I think when hearing about it, I, you know, earlier I said uh, this, this Russell Brand thing is interesting because it, it really does show the, um, the, the mind of the red pill. I'm going to say mind virus, but it, I don't know right. if it, it qualifies. It's a, it's a social movement. Now we did this video a long time ago called uh, something about, no, I'm not red pilled. That's stupid because all it is doing is being these contrarians that are now turning whether you want it or not to the right. And all the stuff the red pill was saying was stuff that uh, hippies were saying in the nineties or the a anarchists in the nineties were saying, mm -hmm. it was like, you can't trust the government. You can't trust big pharma. You can't trust corporations. They're all trying to use you, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody had figured this out. Right. Well, okay. Just to contextualize it. So when people far into the future are listening to this episode, the year is 2023. What happened? They finally came for Russell Brand. And the red pill movement is a contrarian movement that is supposedly going on from the Matrix online. Mm -hmm. So these people who are also woke, it's, this, it's the same terminology. They take the red pill and woke up. Mm -hmm. So everyone says that they're awake. You're either woke or you're red pill. It's all and these it's, pills floating around the internet. Yeah. Everyone's on pills because it's 2023. <laughs> And the red pill are people who took the red pill and woke up as opposed to being woke. And they think they're more aware than others, but they have the same contrarian tendencies. And now they're right wing. Whereas if they'd been 20 years ago, they'd have been left wing. Well, do you want to start at the beginning of who Russell Brand is? Because 
they're saying they're equating the takedown of Russell Brand to the Matrix coming for Andrew Tate too. And Andrew Tate is way worse than Russell Brand. He's a pimp. He's a he's, he's a self-described. It. Yeah, pimp. he gave classes on how to pimp. <laughs> right? But it's it's funny that the the red pill internet uh, people they're heroes. They're their heroes, and they're basically saying that like none of these things that are coming out about Andrew Tate and about Russell Brand could possibly be true, even though. They're obviously they obviously line up with who they were at least five years ago. Maybe I, not Russell Brand. Yeah, I, I do. I feel uncomfortable comparing Russell Brand to Andrew Tate because no, I think but, Andrew Tate is a straight up pimp. He is and a straight he up pimp. He was never he never hit it until it was time for him to get religion because all these red pe- pill people have in the past year decided to get religion, whether it's Islam or uh, evangelical Christian or orthodoxy or whatever. They now it's time for religion. Someone put the a religion program in and now it's just disseminated over the internet and now they've all found religion they all found god which is just fantastic same people the same type the same demographic the same demographic were the new atheists 15 years ago i have mm-hmm. no patience for anything online anymore well the reason you're right they're not the same we shouldn't equate them exactly but Andrew russell Tate brand's and brand. yeah, persona I'm, do not. In, russell brand's whole persona until 15 years ago was that he was like a sex maniac Until party 10 years guy, ago a cheeky drug addict well honestly here, here's my thing i do think he's changed mm-hmm. because he's also much older what is he like 48 now yeah and he, he does i think he did legitimately get sober from very hard drugs which is another thing where i'm like well how are you defending how do you the people keep these red pill people keep saying like these women are lying that this is an attack by the matrix, but it's like, this is all behavior that probably was part of his, part of his legitimate personality when yeah. he was a, a drug addict. <laughs> well, I think, I think a lot of the sex ac- accusations come after his drug abuse. Cause they said he's been clean for 15 years Yeah, because I do believe people can change. And I do believe that a lot of people have changed just from, being exposed to me too and they say well this is consent we didn't know this back in the day there was one allegation against russell brand it's not an allegation it's all um it, it's documented and he did it uh, they call it Saxgate in the uk and basically he had had a brief affair with this man's uh from faulty towers his granddaughter this guy's called sax and he called up this man and said i've had sex with your granddaughter and left all these like really just inappropriate messages on his machine and this turned into a huge scandal and these people in the uk were slut shaming the granddaughter and sax the actor didn't speak to his granddaughter for eight years so she uh she bore the burden of having done this when you know anyone anyone's exes could call up their grandfather and say i had sex with you know your granddaughter yeah it's shithead behavior he should never have done this It's completely wrong of him to do a lot of people in the uk turned against him for this uh but if he would do something like that, call yeah. up an old man and, you know, 70, 80 year old man and say, I've had sex with your granddaughter and leave yeah. these messages and have the entire country know about this. And then the granddaughter is so traumatized, she ends up in rehab, yeah. which to his credit, Russell Brand did pay for yeah. many well, years later. I said this to you. I said, if this had been an accusation of fixing market prices or insider trading, I would not have believed it from Russell Brand. I'm like, this is not his personality type. <laughs> but this is, makes but this, perfect sense. Yeah, this goes hand in hand about with his entire personality, his entire persona pre Katy Perry. Right. And so, pre YouTube. Pre yeah. YouTube. But no, pre Katy Perry, because if you were following the tabloids, he had kind of fixed himself up with Katy Perry and then the divorce happened. And yeah, this is the same thing as a, people were aware of this. People mm-hmm. were aware of Saxgate. Right. This was a common knowledge in the UK. Everyone just forgot about right. it. Right. So why does the Matrix only seem to take down these um, truth tellers that have a history that <laughs> obviously it's unfortunate. Is- <laughs> it's unfortunate, and it it's sh- it should have been something. And he, you know, he was honest about his sexual past, but I think of all the things that he's done, Saxgate is probably the most deplorable. Calling up somebody's That's grandfather, horrible. yeah. And humiliating him on national television. And his co-host, this man named Ross, actually said, you know, we don't have to air that. Mm. And Brand was like, no, we're going to air it. Because it's getting him negative attention. Now, here's something I've noticed about some people, perhaps Russell Brand included, and this is why I see him as a tragic figure in this, is that 
this lady was on, I think it was Sky News when we were watching this, and she said, we used to laugh at him when we were, you know, 18-year-old girls. And now we look back after Me Too, and now we're like, that was disgusting. Mm -hmm. But I was like, you were laughing at him back yeah. then. You were encouraging him to do this. Right. And he was making his money off of the cheers from the audience, same audience capture. And now the same thing. The, what we criticize Russell Brand about is his audience capture. Yeah, because we do, as, as the audience, really kind of create the trajectory of a Especially, lot of these characters. Particularly in like stand up. Yeah. Stand up. And, and for personalities, these influencers who, you know, just live off of attention. Mm -hmm. And so what's getting them the most attention they're going to do. Yeah. And so that's, that's audience capture. Like it's audience capture. About. And so in 2006, when he was this, you know, sex creep, whatever, on the BBC, well, he's not a sex creep, but what do we call him? Uh, raunchy, sexy. They have a cutesy name for it over there. You yeah. can't take those people seriously. Yeah, they cannot be taken seriously. I can't believe they took over the whole world. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and so he was giving the audience what they wanted then. And now the audience is like, that is terrible. That was so disgusting. But who was laughing at it? Right. Who was encouraging it 15 years ago? The same person who's now condemning him. Yep. So it is what it is. If yeah. it goes to court, I'll go to court. But it, it's also, like you were talking about before, it, it's so interesting how... We were just walk, watching this self-described, I'm not just throwing this term around, like this is a self-described red pill podcast dude. Um, podcast dude. <laughs> we're not gonna, from a year ago. Yeah, we're not going to try to, we're not going to talk bad about any particular individual, but this person's insufferable. And yeah. he, did, he did an episode of his show a year ago talking about how uh, Russell Brand has joined the red pill team and kind of used red pill team and um, right wing interchangeably interchangeably which and is that, insane because what he was referencing was a video where russell brand said that the media doesn't care about you the culture doesn't care about you the government doesn't care about you and businesses don't care of you they're all trying to take advantage of you which is like yeah obviously like everybody figured this out already yeah i had that it feels very immature and it makes me sort of cringe because i think about myself as a senior in high school when i figured that out yeah, you were a when late you're bloomer. When you're supposed to figure that out in high school. Yeah, I say you fi yeah, you figure it out freshman year when you read the people's history. Yeah. And that's when you figure it out. Yeah. And for people who are 30, 35, now coming to this conclusion, it's like, guys, what have you been doing? He, w he was, Russell Brand in particular, was busy doing drugs and being a rock star. Like... <laughs> Because cause there's different layers to this. Like you figure out in high school that these institutions are corrupt and they're awful and they're trying to screw you. And then you figure out after college that they are still necessary because without them, the chaos is even worse. Yeah. I just There don't... are levels and he, he, he hit the high school level and is speaking to the whole country who is also in high school. Yeah. And it's like, guys. That's where we are now. We, we need to move on to they are necessary and we need to fix them and well, move on. Well, more specifically, because we were talking about this earlier and we were saying, like, I, I hate that the quote unquote red pill people have taken this obvious truth that, like, the, all the institutions that sort of control everything you do don't have your best interest at heart. And they've sort of co-opted them into this, like, red pill right leaning thing which is like you said How is before it even right leaning it's i don't not even right understand leaning. and this th remember that video i put that out and i was like yes i'm awake to all of this stuff no i'm not ever voting republican they're like, and people were like you don't know what this is about did it does nothing to do with politics and now all of them all of them are basically either trump people or desantis people because right. it goes into politics because it can be easily funneled and co-opted into politics and all those people were dumb and i got the most <laughs> racist stuff on uh odyssey from that yeah. the most racist comments from a bunch of mouth breathing white supremacists for saying that and now it's 120 percent true and freaking obvious because russell brand who is saying what the people's history said 20 years ago is considered right-leaning it is and, so stupid and it's not yeah it, it to be fair the you know the left-leaning corporate democrat types are giving the right Russell Brand or anybody who says this out loud for some yeah. reason. They're basically saying, they're basically describing people who say that the government doesn't have your best interest, business, whatever. 
Um, well, that's the, because they're the, describing them as right leaning. Yeah. The Democratic Party got taken over, uh, I suppose, starting the Clinton years where right. it became Republican light. And so now the Democratic Party, which used to be for unions and used to be for the working man, has now been taken over by the laptop class. Mm-hmm. So they, we have the Republican Democratic Party won. And then we have the complete psychopaths that have that are the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. That has now become the Republican Party, where Liz Cheney was too uh, Liz Cheney was too rational for the Re- Republican Party. Right. So she got pushed out. Yeah. So the 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 that's where we are now. We yeah. have we have the Republican Democratic Party, and then we have a bunch of psychopaths. Yeah. So the the Liz Cheney's the the alt right. I think self described. I don't I don't know alt right Republicans. Um, are openly saying these things, yes, but they're not. They are also th- that is also a grift. Like, <laughs> of course, it's a grift. It's also a grift. And we, we, we were saying we really hope that eventually something will come out of this. People being sick of grift being grifted at, but it seems like that thing that's coming out of it really is this internet red pill culture thing. It, which and the red pill is nothing. So if if it is something, then it's uh, purposely diverting the conversation from having any actual uh, advancements Mm -hmm. because what has to happen is sensible people like you and me have to start having kids and realize, yo, we need this shit functioning in 20 years. We need, we need this government. We need these institutions. We need them to be functioning in 20 years so that when our kids grow up, they're not completely screwed over. Yeah. So I don't know how I don't know how that happens. More people have to have kids. More people have to ignore this stuff. More people have to run for office. But the far left and the far right are completely incapable of running this country. Yeah. And Russell Brand is not is not a takedown. He's not a threat to anybody. He's <laughs> never been a threat to anybody. Yeah, I love them talking about him and Andrew Tate like they're actually going to make a difference because it's like we've known people who've had this awakening that were being exploited by all major institutions. That's the point of the major institutions now. And We've yeah. sort of, I've at least personally sort of given up. Maybe I'm a fatalist a little bit. I'm like, this is all like, you're not going to convince enough people of these things to make a difference. And they do all seem to be selling something also. Well, there's got to be some sense of self-preservation. Like as more people have kids, I'm not even joking. We have to understand we need the FDA there. We need, even if it's not the FDA, it's got to be something because we need institutions there to keep the chaos yeah. at bay. I got distracted, but that was the other thing you said, that there is nuance to that, right? So if we break down, you know, the media doesn't have your best interest at heart, the culture, the government, big business, they don't have your interest at heart, but the oh, conflating yeah. of all of them into one like ultra umbrella oppression is wrong because they all have their own interests. It, it's more nuanced. Own. Yeah. Well, what what you're seeing there is a battle of the top tenth of a percent, mm-hmm. the top one percent or whatever. You're seeing a battle of the elites, and people think that like we're involved, but we're involved in that we pay taxes or give our attention to this. But when we're talking about this like Illuminati conspiracy, like they're all getting together to work against us. The truth to that is, yeah, these are the people that are all in the country clubs that can afford the $500,000 down payment plus the yearly fees of $75,000 to join these upscale country clubs. So there is some truth in that the elites are keeping us down. However, they each have their own interests. Yeah. The media has something it wants and the government has something it wants and all these people are battling for control. And then when we take sides, it's it's kind of, it's kind of silly because unless you can afford that country club, club payment... You know, like George Carlin said, it's a big club and you ain't in it. Yeah. And it just needs our allegiance. Now, I will say this. I will say this. People think that uh, our gov- our government is the worst thing in the world. Our media isn't the worst thing in the world. And we should hate them a lot. We should hate them a lot. But they still need us making money and paying taxes. So it's still in their best interest to have us doing somewhat well. Mm-hmm. So they can't completely throw us under the bus because they need us to pay into them. Right. And this is the this is this is why they keep it so broad as to just say the matrix or the r- ruling elite or whatever because it's like once you get into the nuances of like who's who needs what from you. Yeah. It gets boring. <laughs> because it is sort of boring. And that's like the all these uh commentators Mm-hmm. need to keep 
saying shit. So they just look for conspiracy in everything, which sort of waters down like actual conspiracies that are happening. Yeah, it, it, there are actual conspiracies. And we can, if we wanted to, use our institutions to correct them. But if we just say, oh, it's all bullshit. Uh, for example, the opioid thing. The Sacklers did conspire with someone at the FDA to get the country addicted to opioids. Is the solution to just throw away the FDA? Maybe after 2020, maybe, maybe. the solution is. But <laughs> the solution is to use the Justice Department to prosecute those people and to publicly say, you did wrong and you harmed the country and the government or you know the justice system is going to bring you to task for this. Right. And if but we were to bring more that... people to task for their illegal deeds, then maybe we could have some sort of um, community, feeling of community. But it is kind of the problem that all of the institutions that are supposed to sort of regulate one another are all in their own way captured and yeah. in incapable of reform. I will see that's the thing, incapable of reform. I, I don't know. If that is the case, then the next generation is really in a bad place. Yeah. Now, you, what you could say, and this is the argument that I'll make just for the sake of making it right now. I don't even know if I believe it, but I want to make this <laughs> argument. We're coming off of a very bad generation, a very selfish generation, very selfish couple of generations. The boomers, you mean? I'm not saying it's the boomers. I'm saying whatever social forces in the past... Uh, this age group of people mm -hmm. who are in power right now have been raised in selfishness. Greed is good, all this other stuff. So the institutions, they're not really, they're not really people. They reflect the people that are in them. So if we have different people coming into these institutions, there is the possibility that they can change and reform. I doubt it. You're very cynical. I'm like, yo, what? Yo, we have a baby in front of us. This baby needs to have a life equivalent to ours. That he needs to have the chance to screw up that we did. Well, anybody even capable of becoming part in any meaningful way of one of these institutions has already been compromised, I think. How so? Like, you're not going to get elected to a government body unless the people who give money to people to get elected have chosen you to get elected right or like a movement like the maga movement like the tea party movement and the maga movement were really the 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 surprises right when like marjorie taylor green gets elected and you're like well she's take politics out of it a moron yeah <laughs> not, uh, yeah not a person who should be in charge of things and Lauren Boebert, oh yeah, God, what like a mess those person. Are the, you need a, I guess you need a movement like the MAGA movement, but for rationality to have the same punch as the MAGA movement did to get somebody into that position within an institution like that. The left has also lost its mind because they're running that lady who sold, uh, in Virginia, mm -hmm. who sold a pornographic... <laughs> Uh, it was on an OnlyFans thing. It was, on, it was like semi OnlyFans of her and her husband having sex, and now yeah. she's like, "It's you've been using it as revenge porn. Like, that's not revenge porn." Uh, but and yeah, you so can do you, that. Go ahead, girl. But it's but go it's, like, it's going to come up. It's going to come up. Defend it. You got to own it. You can be like, "Yeah, me and my husband sold porn of each other. We're freaks." Yeah, you got to be like, "Yeah, we're freaks," and deal with it. It will not affect my ability to lead. Yeah, that's what you have yeah, to. Yeah, don't say. complain that it came out it yeah. was definitely going to come out and they're attractive people so you know whatever that's what you're gonna do but i think it's gonna be harder because rationality just isn't as sexy mm -hmm. yeah, so getting exactly. people to exactly. get caught up in a movement like you're not gonna get my fan base the demographic that is my fan base that is just like hyper rational to get caught up in a movement because my entire youtube is hey don't get caught up in a movement yeah. this, these are the box of checks right right and that's why I think I'm so cynical. It's like, it's just not going to happen. You, you're not going to get the steam that the MAGA people got behind something that is actually going to be productive and good. You know what? You know what? And this doesn't necessarily apply to this, but I do believe you can get incredibly boring people to do. And I'm not, 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 to, not coming at my audience, but incredibly rational people to do what needs to be done and do you remember watching ken burns the civil war oh yeah so i've i've loved this many times this series <laughs> I, i've i watch it all the time and when tony goes away to travel it's kind of like my happy place and i go back to it <laughs> uh which is which is strange but they're talking about the north 
And the Southerners are like, oh, we're going to whip the North. Da, da, da. They're a bunch of, uh, you know, sad sacks. You know, they're just there on their porch, like whittling and, you know, Protestant and all this stuff. And someone said about the North, they're like, it's a slow moving iceberg. But once you get it to moving, you can't stop it. Yeah. So that that's sort of like, you don't want to necessarily, you don't want to awake, awake in the middle class well, or the, t- the middle of the country i wouldn't say the middle class but once you do there's nothing you can do to stop middle. it ideologically middle but once you do there's nothing you can do to stop it because if someone is like i have kids now and i have to make certain sacrifices to make sure that they have a life and and they're going to do that despite the risk that comes to this person mm-hmm. especially if they have a business or whatever then they're all in yeah and a lot of the things that I think people bring up, like they, they pit the far right and the far left against each other. Like, I don't necessarily think things like that need to be coordinated from any central point. I think that mm-hmm. might just be, that's just human nature. Like we're not a species, we're not advanced enough as a species to not have those impulses. Well, it's also the algorithm. The algorithm is yeah. floating these hashtags to the top, hashtag red pill, hashtag Russell Brand, hashtag woke, hashtag whatever. It's getting floated to the top. So we, we're under a very specific set of circumstances. This has been a clip from my weekly Patreon podcast. I got more content coming soon from my YouTube peeps. I've just been recovering from this childbirth and all. This week we talk about Russell Brand. We talk about red pill. We talk about the male obsession with the fall of Rome. And of course, those weird little Mexican aliens. Thanks.